So let's start looking at some of the pre-built tools, starting with the Kirk McDonald calculator. So the Kirk McDonald calculator uh, starts out kind of by default, defaults to the red circuit. Um, but I want to start actually on the settings tab because this is the most important place to start when you're working with this calculator because uh, Kirk McDonald defaults to the current stable version of Factorio as the recipe set. Um, you can pick the expensive mode and you can switch to the recipes as defined in the beta version and also with the expensive mode. He did add the 0.16.51 with the 0.17 science mod. This was a, a mod that was added once they started talking about the science changes at the that took place at the beginning of 0.17 so that people could experiment with those, those setups in 0.16 um, before 0 0.17 came out, whenever that was, six months ago or so. And then he also, at that point, in t or at one point in time with 0 0.16, also experimented with incorporating Bob's mods into his tool. But we're not gonna, we're not gonna look at either of those. We're just gonna look at 0 0.17.1 because that's exactly the version that I'm, well, that's the version that I'm basing all of my tutorial on, is the 0 0.17 science as it exists now through uh, whatever version is current, which is 17.59. Okay, so the first thing you do when you come to this web page is change that. If you're playing 0 0.17, you must change that. Uh, color scheme, I'm not that worried about because I'm not planning on printing. Um, usually for at least through the rocket, I prefer items per second. Um, the The amount of science you're producing, the amount of, uh, you know, you know, the belts for your bus. Most of the time, I measure that in items per second. If I start looking at items per minute, it's when I'm in like mega base mode and I'm producing tons of stuff. Uh, the rate precision is just a the number of decimal places after the um, after the, the the amount of products, and then the factor precision is the number of decimal places of the machines that you want to use. So that if you have a fractional number of machines, how many how, where you want the rounding? That's basically just the rounding. Um, and then the next kind of piece is what do you want your factory to be based on? What level of machine? And I'm going to do assembly machine two. What furnace do you want to use if you're doing, if you're including anything that has to do with smelting? I'll just use the steel furnaces. Uh, what type of fuel you're using if you're looking at smelting? I'll just leave it at coal. What do you want to do as far as oil processing? And I'm going to leave it at advanced oil processing because once you get advanced oil processing, as we just proved with our spreadsheet, you pretty much want to stick there unless you have a limited supply of crude and then you want to do the the um, coal liquefaction. Um, we're not going to look at uranium processing and covrex whatnot, but if you wanted to disable that for some reason, so you didn't want to use it in a playthrough, you could uncheck that. Uh, preferred belts, we're going to do yellow belts. I'm not going to worry about these components just yet because we're not going to deal with anything to do with, with smelting, so mining isn't really... Uh, a factor in what we're looking at and then uh, the pipe length if you're doing a lot of work with with fluids like when you're setting up oil for example you want to worry about this but uh, this has to do with pipe throughput and basically 17 above ground pipe segments is the max you want to go without having a pump in order to maintain the 1200 fluids per second pipe throughput and then if we were moduling a beacon which beaconing which we will actually get to at the end of the toward the end of the tutorial today uh, we could set the defaults we wanted for those um the recipe sort order topological versus alphabetical i i usually do topological that way the items that are produced sort of later in the in the factory are near the top and the ones that are that are used or produced earlier in the factory are near the bottom 
Uh, I prefer to look at the decimals. We could also look make it look like fractions. And then I don't know what the not fancy tooltips looks like, but that's fine. So on the factory tab, let's produce something we've been producing all day today. Let's produce iron gears. And let's say we want the 15 that we were producing earlier. Just like the Windows calculator proved, just like the spreadsheet proved, we need 10 factories making gears, for, uh, consuming 30 iron plates, which is two yellow belts. And then we can actually, uh, one of the things that, that Kirk McDonald has is if you, if you want to, if you're providing items from the bus, you can click on the item you're providing from the bus and it will deselect the dependencies for it. It'll, it'll hide them on the screen. So since we're in theory going to be providing the two belts of iron here from the bus, we're not worried about at this point when we're setting this up, we're not worried about how much iron ore that means, how much coal that means for fuel. We're just worried about we want two full yellow belts of iron to make one full yellow belt of, of gears. Pretty simple. So we could go through. Um, actually, before I do that, um, let's go to the Visualize tab. This is something that Kirk McDonald added after he added the Satisfactory Calculator. Here he added... Um, he added like a, a, a sand key diagram. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. Sand key, sand key. Which, which gives you the amount of uh, product input, the amount of product output, and gives you kind of a a width here of of the bar connecting the two and we'll see this as we get to the more complex recipes a width here of the bar that that symbolizes how much relative product there is in this in this kind of conversion this say this belt versus this belt so he kind of gives you a little bit of the same kind of look and feel here with that um, you can also do a boxes and lines diagram, which just tells you the amount. Um, and you can make it be vertical instead of horizontal. But it's the same kind of same kind of diagram, uh, just showing you different different components, different items. So if we look at uh, other than gears, if we look at things like Electronic circuits. I scroll very past it. Say again, we want one full yellow belt, 15 items per second. That's given here. So we need 10 factories, which is exactly what we calculated earlier. We need, so we need 45 copper, which means we need 22 and a half copper, which is one and a half yellow belts. And we can, again, ignore the smelting portion and the mining portion of the process because we're going to we're going to handle those separately and we're going to bring it in on belts. So this gives us the exact same um the exact same output that the calculator gave us and the spreadsheet gave us. And we can kind of just go through the same set of uh recipes that we did only we want one and a half for a second of those. So again, 10 factories, one factory produces one and a half uh, red science. And 12 factories. Now, this is where it gets a little. Uh, actually, let's, let's make the green circuits be a bus item. Okay. So uh, we need one and a half inserters, which is one factory. We need one and a half belts. Which is a half a factory, if you recall the the calculation we did in the spreadsheet here. I believe it was on this one. Yes. But Kirk McDonald merges the gear requirement into one line. So he's saying that we need one and a half machines making iron gears here. Which is a combination of the gears we need for the inserters and the gears we need for the belts. 
if you want to know how many gears are needed for inserters versus how many gears are needed for belts, you actually have to click this arrow that opens just that component of the, the factory in a separate tab in your browser and shows you that you need one machine making gears for the inserters and then a half a machine making gears for the belts. That's the one, kind of the one thing about Kirk McDonald that I don't like is the combining of the, the child products into a, um, into one line when it's feeding two separate components to my factory. Um, which I guess that's why he's provided this, this open item in separate window link. But for me, that's actually a little bit more confusing because I don't know without look, I mean, just look at the recipes and everything, but you don't necessarily know how you want to lay this out just by seeing this. So this is good for kind of getting, giving you the numbers, giving you an overview, but as far as like figuring out the actual layout like we did in the game earlier, or actually we didn't for this, for this recipe, but as far as figuring out the layout, it doesn't help me as much as I would like it to. The other thing we can do is uh, we can look at plastic. Now, by default, since we chose the advanced oil processing, and let's say we want 15, by default, Kirk McDonald tells us we need 7.5 coal per second, which is a half of a yellow belt. But Kirk McDonald also does the math here on the amount of oil we need input-wise in order to produce these the petroleum gas, assuming you're cracking it all down to petroleum gas, to produce the petroleum gas you need to make the the plastic so we need we have we have 16.667 i'm sorry we have 8.4 machines uh, 8.4 refineries which we can compare here uh we need this to be 150. yeah because he's rounded up to 8.4 8 0.9 there so he's rounded up there and 5.9, which is that. So that corresponds directly to the the formulas that we created here in Excel or in in Google Sheets in in the spreadsheet. That corresponds directly to this this input amount. So. That's kind of the overview of the way Kirk McDonald works and the, the kind of gotchas and, and catches that you have when you're making things that different portions of the factory require the same item. It's summarized in one line instead of being broken apart into the amount of, uh, into each sort of feeder portion of your factory. So that's, that's just something to be careful with when you're doing com more complex recipes. And, but it's not, not a huge concern. It's just something to be aware of.